Welcome to Alphanar Visual Library of Method Statements. This video will describe the installation and testing procedure for grounding grid mesh activity in substation construction projects. We will cover the following contents in this video. Purpose and Scope Responsibilities Tools and Equipment Installation Procedure and Testing Procedure The purpose of this method statement is to facilitate execution and quality team to correctly perform this activity at site. Whereas the scope of this procedure is to define the sequence of activities for installation and testing of grounding mesh, project team will have the following responsibilities to execute this activity. Site manager and project manager, will be fully responsible for ensuring the activity completion as per approved drawings and applicable standards by arranging required materials and resources. Quality Control Engineer, will be responsible for ensuring and monitoring all grounding grid mesh installation activities are executed as per client requirements, Saudi Electricity Company Procedures, PTS, approved IDPs. He will submit RFIs to consultants and arrange their inspections in order to get work approval. Where required he will coordinate with independent lab for testing. Foreman will be responsible to execute activity of installation as per IFC drawings and approved method statement. He will be key contact with site manager or engineer for materials and resources required for this work. Safety officer, will be responsible for ensuring best health and safety practices across working, storage areas, and during equipment operations. He must prepare risk assessment for effective controls. These tools and equipments will be required to perform this activity, steel wire brush, paint brush, bituminous paint, thermite weld mold set, weld powder, flint igniter, and resistance tester. The procedure of executing this activity will involve two parts, first, installation, and second, testing. Below steps are to be followed for installation procedure, ensure, grounding conductor and rods are approved, as per BOQ and drawings, prior to use at site. It is important to ensure, the depth of grounding conductor that must be as per client specification, before laying. Usually, it varies from 0.5 meter to 1.5 meter depth, from finish floor level. Ensure, this depth from approved IFC drawings, and lay the mesh at the required level. If required, must get the permit to work, from competent authority, before starting the grounding mesh activity. The spacing of grounding mesh varies from 3 meter to 15 meter as per soil conditions, but shall be laid as per approved drawings. Grounding rod, shall be driven vertically up to required length, and height. Take care, when performing the joint welding, that, thermite weld mold size and powder type shall be same brand for joint connections. Weld all junctions, with thermite weld mold and weld powder, properly. Ensure, solid junction and connection, as result of thermo welding. After doing the joint welding, it's very important to clean the thermite weld connection with steel brush, then carefully apply bituminous paints for additional protection of joints, and then wrap the applied bituminous paint with vinyl tape. Testing, is the second part of this procedure. Before going to backfill overlaid grounding grid mesh, ensure, the following tests and checks are done. Number 1 measure and test, contact resistance, of all bolted or thermite welded joints at 100 ampere DC number 2, check and verify, all thermite welded joints are securely connected to mesh. Number 3, check, electrical resistance, of grounding points and main grounding system, according to IEEE standards. And number 4, measure and test the grounding grid system by fall of potential method thank you for watching we hope this work methodology will be useful at site